Okay, so from popular demand, we're going to go ahead and show you how to tap the filter on the ICOM 756 Pro 3. Um, as you can see, I got it flipped upside down, um, and we're going to remove the bottom case here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video and do that. Okay, now with the bottom removed, uh, the next area we want, we want to get into is this area here that's shielded off. That consists of those six six screws or whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those and then come back. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and where the area that you want to tap for the filter is in this area right here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the cover. Let's get that out of the way. I'm gonna lightly pry up on this can. It's got a little ground jumper. And where this cap is, I can get my camera to focus. Move some light around here. Is that third filter right there? And according to VK2 DAG Matt's instructions, you do the shield of your small coax to the shield of this and the center to that spot right there. Now I'm going to prep the cable and go ahead and get that ready, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, before I get into uh, soldering the, the little wire, or the coax onto the filter, um, I want to show you what we're going to solder the other end to. And Right here, there's a lot of debate. People are saying yes, some say no. But here's a Clifton Labs um, Z1000B buffer amp. And what this will do is this will keep keep it at a nice even keel level and it'll also act as a buffer so you don't get anything backwards going into your filter or any noise any of that stuff. I've been really I tapped uh, my Pro 3 this one's actually my father's K7 LED and I, we're tapping his now as you see I I used a, I prefer SMA because it's smaller it's easier to deal with but they don't make any mounts or any that I've seen that are small enough to fit the whole pattern. So you have to kind of modify. I modified a board mount style to kind of fit this. You know, so make sure that the center pin goes to the uh, positive and the shielding goes to the negative. And you see, I kind of finagled it. Doesn't look super pretty, but it works. Make sure, make, just make sure when you do this that up there where it hits C11, not that c is in place right now, but just make sure it doesn't, that you're shielding or, or ground doesn't hit that point because it, it can, will get pretty close and in fact Radio Shack sells one of these SMA connectors that I used on mine and it's a little bit smaller so it actually fits in pretty good um, anyways I'll go ahead and prepare I'll go ahead and solder it onto this side first and where you want to do is you want to go with your with one end let me move this around we're going to take this end, solder it in to the input, and the other end is going to go to the filter. And I'll explain it more as I kind of go along here, um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and prep all the soldering. Okay, back again just to show you guys something. The Clifton Labs board does require 12, around 12 volts. You know, I think it ranges from like 9 to 16 or whatever, but uh, anyways, I the spot I like to tap it because I don't want to really mess with the board too much is right off the antenna tuner jack. If you follow it back from over here where we pulled it off, it goes into this jumper here. Now, if you look, if you're looking at the colors of the wire, which you probably are because you're inside your radio, orange on this one is is the 13, 12 volts or 13 it says on the on the service manual it's 14 but that's okay and the yellow is chassis ground um, I did verify all 
with the uh, service manual and with my meter and everything, and it looks looks pretty good. Let me see if I can get that to focus. And there's these little legs that stick out here, and so I just soldered right to those. Figure that's probably the best way. You can, it's not super, you know, it's not too invasive. Anything happens down the road, you can pop those right back out. And then just be sure to secure it with a cable tie so that doesn't come undone, you know, later on down the road when you're putting this onto your, onto your, uh, buffer amp. Alright, next, I'll, uh, be back with the next step. Your camera. Okay. So I've soldered the, the center of the coax, of the micro coax, to the very end position on the last filter, and the shielding to the case, uh, to the ground case of this little filter shield box. And it goes around here, and goes to our um, Clifton Labs buffer amp. What we did is we just decided to drill a little hole, Now that's up to you if you want to do that. Install a little SMA connection on there. Makes it real handy on plugging in and out. Um, otherwise you can do it the way that, you know, the way that Matt does it. With the instructions and you slip through here you know, that lifts up enough to where you can actually slip a little micro coax there um, i figured this way would it be it works it's in it's good and you don't have a, a coax that you could potentially pull out and you know mess up other things um, now one thing yeah, you you do want to do is make sure that it's just all good make sure you know double check your work make sure you don't have any shorts uh, as you're putting things back together, just kind of give everything a once over before you fire it up. Um, it's not super pretty job, but it's not too bad either. And as you can see, the filter's in, comes over, and that goes into the input of the, of the buffer amp. And that goes to the output, which we mod the SMA connector, and we'll just go SMA. Uh, right to a BNC on a little pigtail connector, right to the soft rock receiver, and then I'll show you guys what the um, spectrum display looks like here in a couple minutes after we fire it up. 